Hello and welcome to the next part of lesson five, creating panorama images. This is one of my favorite uh, tools to use, when I, especially when I have a simpler camera that uh, doesn't allow me to create panorama views. So I had to do it manually using Photoshop. The big part about this tool is to have your images overlap. When you're taking images, if you know you're gonna use it as a panorama, have them overlap. So let's go ahead and start to create a panoramic image. First of all, let's go ahead and select files, automate, and select photo merge. When photo merge opens up, there we go, we select different perspectives, cylindrical, spherical, depending on the type of picture. Let's go ahead and select auto and let's browse to the files that, uh, to the lesson five and let's add the files. See, these files all are my images of the panoramic. I'm just going to select them in no particular, no particular order. Click OK. In the sense, you'll see Photoshop adding the, the files, one, two, three, four. It just happens to be numbered one, two, three, four. It doesn't have to be numbered one, two, three, four. It can be in any order. Photoshop will analyze all the pictures and see if they fit together based on some elements of the picture. Vignette removal, we're going to leave blank. Do you match your distortion correction? That's for how does it look like a fisheye? We're going to leave it blank. And content aware fill, transparent array, leave it blank. I'm actually deviating from the book because I actually want you to understand what the computer is doing on their content aware fill. And if you have an older version of Photoshop, you can still be able to do this particular exercise. So let me go ahead and create this particular uh, image uh, stitching. Actually, let me go ahead and select content aware fill, just so you guys can see what happens before and after I select it. I'm gonna hit click OK. The computer is gonna process, it takes a few minutes. It's doing some processing. Notice the image is coming through and notice it's going to be selected and one image is going to happen automatically in a few seconds. So it's processing. And there is our image. Okay, this is what the image looks like. Notice the inside part is our image. This area between is an autocorrect fill. It did a pretty good job in filling the image out. It's beautiful. And notice each image now, see this area that's missing? That was autocorrect fill. And I'll show you how to do it without using the automated function. This right here, these parts of the image, are different eight photographs being stitched together and the computer decides how to rotate the picture so it best fits the landmark. Over here you'll see some uh, masking that's going on that's happening. The picture is not ruined, the mask is just there. So let, let's look at this first skyline picture number one. I'm going to right click on the mask and I'm going to say disable layer mask. There's the entire picture being skewed in order to fill and connect with the, the next picture in line. Let me go ahead and attach this picture. You can see now a sharp line where it didn't fix it because I disabled the mask. Let me disable the mask again on the second picture. And there as you can see the pictures, right? And you'll notice that these images have overlap. This image, and this image have overlap. See the buildings? It's actually almost half the images overlapped. See that? There's this, there's the there's the little build, the tall building, there's the short building, there's this white line, there's the red building. All of this is being overlapped. That's how the computer knows which image goes with which image. Anyway, I'm going to go ahead and undo all of this.
uh, let me go ahead and undo it just by closing it, Let's hit no. And now we're gonna do the manual process. We're gonna go file, uh, we're gonna do automa automation, photo merge, and we're gonna select the same image, browse, the same files that we did before. But we're not gonna say content aware fill, right? We're gonna click okay. The computer will process this images as it did before. They'll put them together for us, but you'll notice the difference. There'll be white space. Now there's two ways of approaching this white space. One way is to go ahead and crop the white space out, just like I'm doing right now. Boom. If you crop, the white space is gone. We need a little bit more cropping on the left and right side. So let's go ahead and do that a little bit more. We can always crop an image to get it perfect. Look at that, right? That's the easiest way of doing it. I'm going to undo by hitting Control Z. The other way to do this is to add a new layer and do a magic wand selection, select Before we do selection, this is the part of the one time in the book we are going to flatten the image. But we're not just going to flatten the image. First, we're going to copy these. So we're going to select all of this skyline one, two, and three, and we're going to click on the folder on the bottom right. We're going to left click on the folder, and we're going to go ahead and create a folder group. And this is the original folder group, right? So now we're gonna select them again. I'm holding down the shift key and left clicking. And now I'm holding the alt key. I'm gonna select it and drag it. Okay, notice there's my original group. Original group, I'm, I don't wanna see it. There's the ones I copied. See, it says copy all next to them. I'm going to select the copies. I'm going to right click and I'm going to select flat, uh, let's see, flat image, flatten image. I'm not going to do that. Merge visible. I'm not going to do that. There we go. Right now, there's one, two, three, four layers visible. Notice layer one is not visible and the or original group is not visible. So I'm going to right click and I'm going to say merge visible. Only this layer merged. Notice all everything else stayed the same. So now I'm going to use the quick, the magic select tool, magic wand. And notice I selected the white area around it. I look, I'm on skyline one, which was a copy, which was merged. And I selected the white space, the blank space, the checkerboard pattern. Now I'm going to go edit and I'm going to click on uh, fill. And I'm going to do a content aware fill right over here under edit. Now the computer is thinking. I can zoom in and see what it's done and see if I like it or don't like it. You give you some scaling. I'm going to click OK. Now you'll notice that the sky was filled with a content aware fill. So Control D to deselect. And now I'm going to in inspect how good of a job it did. It did a pretty decent job. Look at that. Nobody would be able to tell the difference except for on the bottom. See that? That's a little bit rough. See that? That's a little bit rough. But overall, it did a fine job. And that's how you create a manually content-aware fill. Layer one is not needed. It's just blank. There's nothing on it. This right here, the layer below this, is created automatically when you did a content-aware fill and you can see what it done and how it did it, see that? 
Thank you for joining me for panoramic uh, image creation. This uh, particular exercise is very important to Photoshop and I underline and stress that you guys should remember how to do this. Again, going to file, excuse me, going to, to edit, file, automate, photo merge. I got confused there for a second because I'm, I'm bouncing between file and edit. So I went to file, it's under automate, and it's under further photo merge. That's how we get this picture in one uniform look. Thank you for joining me and see you in the next lesson.